Don't forget about Jesus Christ, folks. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We've all heard that. We all know that verse. God loves you. He died for you while you were yet sinners. God died for you. God emptied himself of his glory and became a man. That's who we keep time to. And he lived a sinless life and laid down his life for you and me. So we wouldn't have to go to this place called hell. Because God is holy and he's righteous. And sin has to be paid for. And God paid for your sin. God emptied himself of his glory and became a man and died for you. Understand these things, folks. Understand. Judgment day's coming. And there's a way out for you. It's through Jesus. With, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. If you don't have Jesus, you will pay with your own blood. You will pay with your own blood if you don't have Jesus. Repent, folks. I love my neighbor and I don't want you to perish. Today, today's the day of salvation. Repent, repent. Do you not know, folks, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor sodomites, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners have any inheritance in God's kingdom. Repent of these things if they're in your life today, folks. Turn from your sin today and obey the gospel. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because life is but a vapor of time. Vapor! It's here and then it's gone. But eternity is forever. Repent, folks, please. I must preach. I must raise my voice like a trumpet because God told me to. But I had to pull that plank out of my eye. I had to get that sin out of my life so I could see clearly to get the speck out of your eye. Quit smoking. I can see clearly today. I no longer fulfill the lust of the flesh.
I seek my treasures in heaven. I seek my Father, Abba Father. Abba Father. It's not my will, it's thy will. Let thy will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, sir. Amen, sir. Repent. Judgment Day. Everybody knows that Judgment Day is coming. Repent. This is not a game. Your life. Repent, folks. Obey the gospel. Obey. For the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny worldly lusts. We should live soberly and righteously in this present age. We should be looking forward to that glorious day of our great God, Jesus Christ, when he returns. The Bible says to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your soul. And these words that I command you this day shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. And when you rise up and when you lie down, you are to be about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let your conversation be that becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent. God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day God is angry with the wicked. God hates all workers of iniquity. He's telling you today to repent, to obey. You must be on fire. Be on fire. For the Lord. Love the Lord today, folks. You are created for Him and His glory. You are to glorify God. He is a jealous God. He doesn't accept nothing less than His obedience and your obedience to Him. He is holy. In God there is no darkness at all. Only light. You must get the darkness out of your life today, folks. Get that willful sin out of your life today. Today is the day of salvation, folks. Today. Not tomorrow. into the world today, folks. Whether you believe or not, do you see anybody glorifying God? Are you? You know, if we turned our life to God, He would heal our lands. He would heal our lands if we turn from our wicked ways and called to him. But I'm crying out to you, individually. You, give your life to God. 
and then go share the gospel. But you don't have to do it like me. But God says, don't hide that lamp under a bushel. So I'm going to let my light shine, and it's Jesus Christ, the righteous and holy one who laid his life down for you and me. And so I'm going to lay my life down for you because I've laid my life down for God. That's how it works. That's the thing with free will. Free will brought sin into this world, rebellion against God. But God didn't want to control you. He wanted to give you the choice whether or not you wanted to believe and obey. But unfortunately, there's a place called hell for those that do not obey the gospel. For Jesus Christ will return with ten thousands of his saints to seek vengeance on all those that do not obey his gospel. So obey the gospel. It's not a feeling. It's not a, an action. If you don't feel like so, doing something, so what? It's about being obedient. Just because you don't want to be obedient doesn't mean you can't be obedient. There's a time in my life when I didn't want to obey, but I did it anyway. I did it anyway. Because love is not a feeling, it's an action. Lust is what this world has got lost up into. Lust. People want to call loving the same sex love. That's lust. Just like me. I was a fornicator. I thought I loved the girl that I was sleeping with. No, it was lust. I hated her. Just like I hated my kids' mother because I didn't marry her. I had children out of wedlock. But today, I obey the gospel. I don't look at women in lust. As a matter of fact, I'd rather not even have that relationship in my life. I would rather just serve the Lord, and I've been doing that. And I can do it tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Why? Because I have a free will, and I can freely choose. And no temptation can overcome you, because God gives you a way out every time. Every time God gives you a way out, so you will have no excuses on the day of judgment. And for those of you who do not like what I'm preaching, well, the Bible says that the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. And I don't want you to perish. And I know that it takes time after a seed is planted, but seeds are being planted today, folks. Let them take root. Let them take root. And then let it grow. And let it grow until you become a full tree that bears fruit as I am doing this day. Because God is the vine. Jesus is the vine. And I want to produce what Jesus tells me to produce in his word. I don't want to be cut from the vine. Let's catch my ass. That's mind control bullshit. You're going to meet him one day. Mind control. You're going to meet him one day. You're going to meet him one day. And you know you are. You suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Judgment day is coming. For God so loved the world, even that woman, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. See, people want to hate Jesus for what? Because he came to save? Because you like to live in sin? Your filth? Your filthy sin? It disgusts God. It's a stench in his nostrils. And I'm not here to cupcake preach. I'm here to tell you to repent because the wrath of God is coming. He's already came as a baby in a manger. He's coming the next time to seek vengeance on all those who do not obey his gospel. 
And you know what's going to happen before that? All the true believers are going to be caught up. All the saints are going to be caught up. Don't be left behind, folks. Don't be left behind. Today is the day. And believe me, because you don't have to, but it's going to happen. God's Word is magnified above all things. Magnified above all things, the Word of God. It's living. The Word of God is living. We keep time to the Gospel. The Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. God bless you too. Thank you. Go tell Norman I'm gonna take a break. My voice, I'm gonna save my voice a little bit. Brother Norman, go ahead and preach, bro. <laughs> Hey, I'm here to just let you know I got myself saved 20 years ago, maybe. Amen. And I've been in trouble all my life. And, you know, I was 55 years old. I was already old. I'm 70-something now. Yeah, I got, I got saved in um, 2011 or 2012. Amen, brother. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what it was, but then someone, some, um, some uh, Korean lady said, you know what happened to you? Because I was explaining, and they, you got saved by Jesus. I was like... You know, I'll do with that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. And anyway, uh, I used to be a big time drunk. I spent a lot of time in the drunk tank. The judge would tell me, hey, Roger, you've got to get some help. You're having blackouts. Oh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but one day I woke up and I actually started believing. I always knew in my heart that I did a couple turns in prison and I never repented. Friends would come up to myself, Roger, come on and go to church. Nah, not me. But you know, 2002, I saw it all different. I turned my life around. Got me off the drugs. Amen. I'm no uh, saint. I drink beer once in a while. I know that ain't right. I smoke cigarettes. I'm sorry. Well, thank God you still have the breath of life. <laughs> you can still get rid of that stuff, yeah, brother. Yeah, I mean, Time is still here for you. Don't wait no more. Don't wait no more. That's why I keep ragging on you because I don't want you to die with that on your, you know, not take a chance. I don't want you to take no chances. Since then, I got saved. Man, I've got all brand new friends, friends I get along with. I'm not out there fighting on streets for my life over a bag of dope. I gave it all up, man. And I'm not really taking like in the drug addicts anymore. I told them, get away from me here. I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll get the next fit. Make it right. I don't care, you know. Mm. But the Lord is good, man. All the time. God is good. You got to him, man. He will at least be here. Love your parents, man. It's all you got left, man. I wish I would have made it home and told my parents I was sorry. I was doing a 40-year sentence, a non-violent crime in prison. I never made it home to say goodbye to my dad. And I'm sorry, but that's what drugging and threw me in prison, probably what I deserve. But not really. I have to let you know, non-violent yeah. crime, I let people know that. Amen. And I used to be a violent person, a fight was nothing to me. You get old, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I 
I realized I could be hurt. I've been hurt. Uh, look up Expect your elders. Tell your parents you're sorry for the things you've done. And they're gone, they're gone. Amen. I'll just tell you. He's got something going down there. Yeah. <laughs>